Hey everyone, my name is Jessica Moon and I'll be your host today for Designing with XD. Hi everyone in the chat, Eric, welcome. Welcome Jack, hi. Donna Jay, is that how you say your name? I hope I said it right, hi Donna Jay. Um, so if you, this is your first time tuning in, you know, basically this is a time where XD folks, we show you kind of some behind the scenes work, also maybe show you a little bit of what is coming, or in this case, we just had a release yesterday night. So if you are, um, an active user right now, you should be able to see those updates. So I'm going to show you a little bit about what we just released, um, especially cause one of the things that just came out is super exciting. Um, and then also for today, since we are in, um, you know, getting ready for Max, I thought I'd just do a little bit of portfolio review since there are some exciting things to come in following shows. So, ah, and thank you. I'm glad that I pronounced your name right. Awesome. So let's take a look at what we just released and I'll demo a little bit of, um, of blend modes, which is kind of our highlight for today's release. So we have coming up here and you can access this link really easily, um, in our blog. And then also if you go to the latest updates, you'll also see it there. But in uh, October, we finally have blend modes, which is very exciting. Um, so blend modes is huge. I'll do a little bit of blend mode showing off here so we can um, get a feel for what it's like. But if you've used any of the other creative uh, cloud products, you'll know basically it's what you see there in XD, which is so awesome. And then some other things are, you know, great, uh, improvements to keyboard shortcuts, just kind of making all of that nuance sort of quick pro keyboarding awesome. I don't know if everyone here that's on the chat is a keyboard shortcut user. I am definitely a keyboard shortcut user. So anytime we have new shortcuts, I'm just like, yes. Um, and then we also have just a bit more collaboration uh, improvements with Microsoft Teams and Slack. And if you are an avid user of design specs, we also have some great updates on being able to inspect elements with greater fidelity by going deeper in the canvas and such. So, um, and if you have been looking at Twitter, we have been sneaking a lot of interesting things. Um, it's no surprise that co-editing is coming very soon. I'm so excited, cannot wait for that to hit. Um, and then also uh, some other things, states, maybe being one of them, um, that you will see closer to the later of this year. So these are the updates and I'm just gonna jump into my screen real quick and make sure I took a picture of a good cat or something. You know, I don't know why, but I always, for some reason, lean on cats. Um, not honestly sure why that happens, but I'm gonna just go ahead and find an image to show off the awesomeness about kitty cats and our recent blend mode updates. So if you are familiar with, actually that's kind of a creepy cat. Let me try again. Um, not too creepy, but just creepy enough. This one kind of reminds me of my cat. So I'm just gonna take a picture. I have a Russian blue. Uh, and so this is kind of, Reminds me of my cat at home named Shadow. And hello, hi Santaji. Yes, keyboards, very exciting. Alice, welcome. So let's talk about blend modes. Blend modes, for those of you who have not mixed color on CC apps, is just as simple as taking one color here and taking another color here. Now we have two colors and here's my magic trick. You can go to RPI and go to this drop down, this innocent drop down, and go like so. Voila. So we have blend modes. Um, they are all the modes that you see on um, everything else, whether you use them in Photoshop and whatnot. Um, and we have all of them here. So I want to make that box darker. I would like to make that a color burn. I would like to make that lighten. 
And by the way, I don't know if you guys have been using Adobe products forever, and I still sometimes can't remember, or I can't anticipate what that um, blend mode is gonna be like, so it's always just kind of fun to just do this. Ooh, I like how hard light looks, that's super cool. And this is basically it. Um, blend modes work on any of these objects, they also work on images, so, First, obviously, if you have a solid color here, that's, as, that's truly a solid color, and you have a blend mode, you can see that the blend mode shines through with this blue cat is now truly a Russian blue cat, not just a named blue cat, actually blue, Russian blue. Um, and then you can also still have it overlapping here, and so you can see it going through and showing different kind of blends. You can also do the same with pictures as well. So if I want for some strange reason for my cat to be the blend mode, if you remember, this one is obviously has a blend mode on it, but this is just a normal uh, vector shape. And so you can't, it doesn't have any magic, but this image has darken on it. And so I can put this cat on this block and I can basically see the blend modes. And now my Russian blue is a Russian red and you can do all sorts of different kind of blend types on it. And there, voila. Um, and also just in case you don't know in terms of how far our blending works, um, you can actually go ahead and if you're a big blurry user, like you like to have awesome blurriness and you do this thing where you typically put an object over, let's say an image to kind of create that sort of nuanced blur. So I'm gonna do that here with my little cat and I wanted to give it a caption. Ta -ta. And I'm gonna go ahead and go like this. And so now I have, let's see, Russian blues are the best. And I'm gonna do this. And I'm going to put this thing right here and maybe I'll just make it a little bit bigger and change that to something else. You can actually go ahead and apply blend modes to uh, even this blurry effect. And so the way it would work is um, you look at the effect opacity, which is where the blend was there, and you can go ahead and change that blend opacity so you're bringing back that red, so you got that red color. And then, same thing, blend mode has uh, overlay, and so now you have a blurred blend mode on top of this image. It's actually kind of weird that it's red though. Let's try going ahead and doing blue. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So Russian blues are the best, which is completely true. I love Russian blue cats. I don't know if you guys have cats, but I'm a very big cat person. And so here it is. Russian blues are the best. And so are blend modes. So there you have it. Just a quick little uh, demo of blend modes in XD. Um, cannot wait for you guys to give this a try. It is super fun, super, look at the performance here. Oh my goodness, whoop, whoop. If you were really magical and you, and I see Alex is in our chat who is one of our design leads for prototyping things, um, you can actually probably animate a cool slider here and do one of those fun little things. So I am not as awesome at prototyping as some people are, so I'm not gonna show you for today, but you could, you could. And dogs are not cooler than cats. I think that, you know, Alex, there's um, definitely opinions there. I have dogs and I have cats. My dog is cool in some ways, but my cats are cool in other ways. And Eric would like Paco to magically move me around. I think that would be very interesting with the blend mode. Um, I did see that though. Um, MJ asks, quick question. What do you do if you can't come up with an idea for a design of your portfolio? Oh my gosh, I'm upside down. That's actually pretty awesome. I did not know you could do that. The magic of Paco. Um, well, thank you for asking MJ because that is a great transition into what I'm doing today, which is talking about portfolio reviews. I have been looking at a lot of portfolios lately due to the fact that, um, due to the fact that we're hiring. So basically, um, if you don't have an idea for a portfolio, I think, all right, I'm gonna get philosophical here for a second. So a lot of people ask me, hey, like what should I put on your portfolio? What do, what, what do you look for as a hiring manager? And that's a really interesting question. It's also trickier nowadays to uh, apply for jobs because 
you know, hiring managers aren't just looking for specifically a set of skills, but they're looking for it within the subset of the team that they're that they are hiring for. If there is a team that's big, um, and so it's not just that you have X skills, but that you have X skills to bring like diversity and to bring um, you know a different mix, if you will, a different flavor in your team. And so what I tend to tell people if they're trying to struggle with like figuring out what they even want to put on their portfolio, I just say, what are you really amazing at? And to double down on those skills um, and to make sure that your portfolio shows you that you are the best at that thing. And so, you know, um, if you're an amazing visual designer, for example, and you are amazing at making icons, then your portfolio should just show you that you are the best icon designer on the planet and that you have a piece there that has that. If you are really great at thinking through system level flows and such, then, you know, you should think about how to represent that thinking, those systems, those models, those diagrams, if you will, um, that illustrate your ability to cognitively think that deep. Um, and you should show that in your portfolio. If you're a prototyping expert, then maybe when you hover over a thing, it shows it animating. Um, you know, I think that basically based on what you are very good at, your portfolio should highlight that. Um, and it should highlight that because of the fact that I think people try to make their portfolio look like what the company wants. And the reality is, is that yes, there's like a certain set of things that people are looking for, but they're also looking for what makes you, you, and, and only you know what that is. So, and philosophical ramble. Um, so with that, Got some portfolios for today. I'm not sure if the folks that uh, we're looking at are on the chat, but if you are, please chime in and say hi. Um, I will just put a disclaimer that I'm putting on my like non-Simon Cowell portfolio self, so I'm gonna be very nice uh, if possible and just kind of subtly give opportunities for improvement. Um, all right, so let's take a look. Um, one thing about portfolios, so for those of you who are especially applying to places that are have lots of um, positions open and are a large team, companies, um, just something you know to know is that there are lots of applicants, right? And so what that means is similar to when you're designing a website for a user um, or an app, you really only have a limited window of time to catch the attention of a person. And so I like to recommend that people on their portfolio, especially on this index page, to um, apply that same, like, you only have a little bit of time to capture their attention thing. And so um, make sure that your thumbnails in general, they not only represent you know, your work, but they also are a good tease and they're also, in and of themselves, um, fantastic thumbnails that captivate your attention. So like right off the bat, I will say that this NASA one and this donuts one and the welcome to my world black and white are ones that I immediately look at visually, um, which is interesting because it's actually third, fourth, well, third, fifth, and sixth in your portfolio list. And so just something to think about is when you order your actual portfolio pieces to make sure that you um, order them in a way that if especially in like an F scan if someone's looking at your portfolio that those really captivating ones that they're there. Um, me personally when I look at an index by the way I kind of uh, pick the first one that is there and then I randomly pick one that I think is very intriguing visually that I think shows off some interest like this donuts one. Um, but then I just random Russian roulette it. I just pick one randomly. And so it's either, it could be the weirdest looking one or the last one on the list or just, I just, you know, pick one. And it's because, you know, there's a lot of meaning behind what you put in your portfolio. I think people sometimes emphasize quantity over quality. And so the random roulette that I do hopefully kind of, you know, pokes at the ones that are maybe not that great and not portfolio worthy. Um, definitely have interviewed and seen people get jobs just on like a couple portfolio items. So I clicked on donuts because it was captivating to my eye. I looked at it and I like donuts. I haven't eaten many donuts in a while though, but I do still like donuts. Um, and so when I look at this, I'm just like, okay, cool. There's obviously the work and it was a submission for a daily challenge and have a nice day. 
cool. Great, very short and simple. So what this tells me is that you have good eye for contrast, um, that your choice in typography is fine. I think that just some things right away, even for a daily challenge, is I would consider making um, this donuts versus these home about stories navigation, making them either the same or making them very different. I think one of the things that happens often when you are um, doing typography is that the nuance, like there's, there needs to be purpose behind your typography choices. And so when you have the difference between two types of typography um, on a layout be just so different, there better be a really good reason for it. Um, as it stands here, uh, I don't see it right away. So I would definitely think about either upping this contrast of this donut right here um, or making them all the same. I don't have a favorite donut. I'm curious if other people in the chat have a favorite donut. I do have to say, I like Krispy Kreme originals. They're very, very, they're very good. And when you heat them up in the microwave for a little bit and you eat them, it's pretty much bliss. But um, I can also go for other donuts, like those fancy ones that have like mm, red velvet and stuff. Anyway, I should stop talking about donuts. Okay, so. Um, I'm also going to take a look at the first one in this portfolio and look at this app design concept. So light mode, dark mode. So my first comment would be that the first thing I saw was not the layout, but actually the words light mode and dark mode, which is good, except for the fact that I can tell that one is light mode and dark mode because literally they all say the same thing and one's light and one's dark. So I think that if there is something you want to say in this, like look at how consistent they are or look at the visual differences, that would be helpful. Look at how I am compliant in um, standards. That'd be something to consider. That would bring it more depth and meaning. That would make me think that, wow, this person knows uh, about like accessibility compliance, really cares about it, is able to really understand how to leverage um, typography in a way that still makes things scannable, something like that around light and dark. So, so on and so forth. All right. So um, let's move on. Thank you, Cars, for being the guinea pig to look at your portfolio, by the way. Um, all right, Aaliyah, or maybe Alia, not quite sure. Sorry if I messed up the pronunciation of your name. Um, Aaliyah, if you're in chat, say hi. Um, let's take a look at Aaliyah's portfolio. So, right away, there's a lot. I probably would look at the first one because it's definitely both visually captivating and it's the most recent piece. And so I want to know what's the latest thing that this person's worked on. Although I also think that this is really interesting. And um, I'm always really into portfolios that show not just UX, um, because I think that, you know, uh, if you talk to anyone on the street and say, hey, you're a UX designer, what's your origin story? People often have different ways of um, reaching their current path, and it's always very revealing in the type of designer they are. It's very interesting. So, you know, I can see from his portfolio that in addition to UX, that there is some fun stuff around Photoshop and manipulation of images. So, first one, booking concert tickets. So, I'm going to look through this. And then I just went to, what the, did? No, okay, here we go. Looking at this iPad and iPhone with a fancy Apple Pencil and then launching the prototype. So right away, what made me like this was the fact that it was a mobile experience. And I think that um, when you're designing for mobile experiences, you have certain constraints. And so very much like to see how people uh, create experiences within those constraints. Um, and then I see that it's a scalable experience in that you have a mobile and an iPad version. And I'm gonna click on this launched prototype. Okay, so right away I'll say that your drop down for your date picker is larger than your CTA. Um, I feel like it's larger by a couple pixels. And so I would challenge um, why there is visual inconsistency there. Um, I would consider either making this more prominent or, um, or trying to balance this out more. I think also because you don't have rounded corners on all four of that CTA, it just makes this thing look tiny. 
Um, I'm a really big fan of uh, invisible sort of graphical pathways, visual pathways, and so the down arrow in this drop down is pretty prominent, maybe a little too prominent. Um, but then what it does is it leads my eye to this, um, which I think could use a bit more prominence, right? You have a lot of this cool halftone uh, pixel stuff on the top, and you have a lot of space on the bottom, but um, given how big the drop down is and smaller the CTA is, um, this, this tile seems like the main center of information, so I would consider making that bigger. Typography also, this is tinier, so it's hard for me to read. I'm getting older with age and can't read things, even in front of my screen. I have contacts on right now. So I would say make that bigger. Uh, a hip book ticket. And again, my tiny eyes. I cannot see. That thing says exit, sideways, entrance. I would probably somehow rectify that so that way I don't have to like tilt my head this way and read it, although it makes for a fun experience. I would also consider, um, again, thinking through your choice of halftones being really prominent here, and then that competing with your new mini halftones, basically, which are the dots of the seats that are in the middle of this page. So I might, you know, make that top part a little bit more quiet, make the center part a bit bigger, and then, yeah, and then from there I'm clicking here, uh, I see I have a certain set of seats. I, I like the fact that you're carrying through with the CTAs, but again, I think that CTA is very subtle. And if you think about it from a business perspective, you want people to buy that ticket, so that thing should be pretty prominent. As a matter of fact, this CTA is almost less prominent than your choose your seat. Um, so I would consider bumping this one up a bit more, making it bigger, and maybe even switching the priority of quality here. And then I bought the ticket. I like this size of this ticket. I would consider doing that with the rest of the UI um, and making that style the same. I still think the typography is a bit small, which makes old people like me um, have a hard time reading it. And then I think that's the end of the prototype. So um, that is it. And I would say very, very cool. Nice work, um, Aaliyah, great job. And I'm gonna go ahead and breeze right through to the next one and try to get as many of these done as possible. I'm starting to think my like mean Simon Cowell critiques coming out due to the speed of trying to go through these portfolios. If so, I'm, I'm sorry. I really do think your portfolios are great. Just wanna get to the meat of things. So um, Sachin. Uh, Sachin is, let's see. Okay, too many words is the first thing I'll say is, the typography differences across each of these tiles makes it hard for me to scan. So my first piece of feedback for the index would be to either at minimum one, have all your titles be consistently at the top of your thumbnails or two, um, adjust the size of the typography between each tile. Like right now, UX case study is screaming at me next to everything else. Even though I think if I keep looking at this, that cinema app has a nice kind of set of um, visual contrast. Trip Me seems like a really interesting experience. Um, I don't really know what that says. Well in photography um, is probably an interesting one as well. And here's where I go Russian roulette because I'm gonna pick this one first because I like cats and I like tigers. Um, I'm not as random when I actually look at portfolios, just as a disclaimer. Okay, so with this, I see that we have a, I'm not actually sure, is this a web browser or a Safari? Um, and so I'm going in here, it looks like an app, I think. I see there's site map, so great, that's really awesome. I don't know why there's a site map. Is the site map to demonstrate that I reconstructed it? or is the site map to demonstrate that it's a complicated marketing experience? So something to think about as you show, um, you know, work in progress artifacts such as this um, is explaining the reason why it's so interesting. Is it because you made a very complicated site map and so you are awesome at making site maps that are complicated and experiences that are complicated? Or is it that you are able to simplify from a bad experience, a, a better experience? And then color is a little bit big. I might not, I might, you know, bring that down a bit in terms of the color's prominence. Um, and then typography also, 
Uh, it was a bit confusing to see and read given the fact that Montserrat's typography size is the, the actual font's like pretty big, maybe bigger than the typography or actually Montserrat's is pretty big in general. Um, so it kind of conflicts with the word typography and wireframe. Uh, and then yes, wireframes are great. What am I looking at though? So uh, I don't know what more me, oh, I see. There are more wireframes in here. I don't think you have to write that if that's the reason why you put it there. I think that just the fact that they're bleeding off of that screen is uh, indicative enough. I would though, when you crop and you do angles like this, just minor polish notes is, if you have a screen like this that you mask and you see there's like well, a little line right there, it's it seems like an error more than an, an intentional crop. So I would consider um, just either removing it entirely or adding a border to that whole square. And then yes, screen landing page. So um, Apple wedding. All right, so it looks like this is a portfolio side of a photographer. Um, and that the typography is uh, pretty prominent and you can go and see their wildlife photography, wedding photography and baby photography. Um, and then a whole screen. So I think that in all, I the app frame for some reason is very distracting to me. So I might just make that app frame, the, the, the Safari browser even more abstract and subtle. Um, I might also consider, um, somehow having a, a narrative because it took me until here to scroll down to realize that you're showcasing the different pages that you had in your sitemap around these um, different kind of landing pages. And so, and not just that, but because the typography is so bold in the actual screenshot itself, it actually competes ironically with the titles of each of your sections. So I would either change the colors there, not make them look very similar, so there's some visual diff there, or I would consider um, making it so that way this screen seems like it is uh, either in the context of a, of a computer or something, just to kind of help a user like me understand that the titles are different from the actual execution on the design. And then I would say you don't probably want to title your thing the way you've sort of titled it, um, either in your file or in your comp. I would get rid of that underscore. That's much more for uh, files themselves, just like that kind of bit of polish. And then um, this is pretty cool. I might lead with your, your visual actually here that has the GIF kind of circling through because that tells you in a nutshell how this experience goes. It actually tells me more in this thing than the other screens would, so I might lead with that. And then, yep, and then that's that. All right, so um, have no time actually for the other three, so sorry. It was just a lot of fun going through the first three for sure. Sachin, thank you for submitting your portfolio. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I think that in general, when you're looking at portfolios, just some final thoughts to consider are, you know, your, I think people under, under plan their index page, their, their main page. And I think that that leads to a lot of people making um, either the greatest judgment about what you're, what you have to offer um, or missing that because of the way that even that's laid out. And then within each of these stories, you know, different designers do different things. They have different case studies. So because of that, you know, tell a more clear narrative and make it clear, like, especially in this last portfolio example, um, what's the voice coming from you? And you can style that like with, you know, nuances to the typography and the color treatments and such of like, what is like the background narrative and versus what's the actual work and making sure that that's not, um, that's not confusing. So things to think about. Um, and also think about like, you know, what are the work, what's the work that really exemplifies your talents as a designer? Make sure that those are very prominent. Um, you know, if it's visual, you know, your, your thumb should be very visual. If it's about, you know, um, depth of thinking through systems thinking, then maybe you might want to do a little bit of a tease of that in whether in your thumb or early in your case study. Um, and so on and so forth. So things to think about. And I see your comment, Maddie, on, on wanting to look at portfolio sites that are not on Behance. I actually had one up here, but due to time couldn't get to it. But I think portfolio sites actually had the same um, feedback there as well. So 
Anyway, if you have any other uh, questions aside from bringing Spider Just back, uh, you know, feel free to add the in the Discord channel that we have. Um, or if you have any other questions around portfolio tips, feel free to ask those as well. And good luck to your portfolios, and hope you enjoy blend modes and such from XD.